Hey everyone, welcome to Smart Course, the go-to place for authoritative information and strategies for special needs and learning disorders, especially ADHD. Today we're going to talk about ADHD and diet. Is an ADHD diet good for you? We will discuss the information we've collected across multiple blogs, websites, and media focused on ADHD. In particular, we'll cover ADHD and diet, ADHD and sensory diet, which addresses the over and under stimulation that may occur with those who suffer from sensory processing disorder, which is usually accompanied by ADHD. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and get notified of future videos. Lastly, we know a lot of people need this information, so please share this video with someone who may need it. Plus, if you like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment, and sign up for our upcoming summit at this link. Then we will pin your comment to the top and we will send you our expert curated list of ADHD resources. To view this summit, please click the annotation in the top right of your screen. The information in this video is curated from esteemed and authoritative resources like Edited Magazine and the free guide What to Eat and Avoid for Improved ADHD Symptoms by Daniel Amen, MD. As a quick disclaimer, Smart Course does not provide medical or health advice. This is intended for informational purposes only. Please read our full disclaimer at smartcourse.io forward slash disclaimer. Always consult a medical professional when dealing with any condition. These conditions do not look the same for every person. You know your child best, so if you notice anything abnormal, make sure you consult a professional for proper assessment, diagnosis, and treatment. There's a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. The concept of a diet is usually used to describe a program that eliminates or reduces the intake of certain foods that make one overweight, such as candies, cakes, pastries, desserts, etc. This can also be complemented with eating other foods instead that will not cause such drastic weight gain, like carrots or celery. Other goals can be to have greater well-being, since studies have shown that what one eats in excess or recess does have an effect on one's mood, energy levels, focus, and many other factors. So the general concept consists of restriction, elimination, and substitution to achieve a specific goal like weight loss or avoid certain conditions such as high blood sugar levels. To know more about a treating ADHD with natural remedies, please click the annotation in the top right of your screen. So what does this have to do with ADHD? Although the study of the impact of food diets on ADHD is still being researched and not extensive, there is support for dietary changes having a positive impact on ADHD symptoms in some cases, and the opposite is true for certain diets that make ADHD symptoms worse, such as with processed sugar foods. This has led to certain terms being created to describe foods that are beneficial for the ADHD brain, such as the term brain-healthy foods as used by Dr. Daniel G. Amen, MD, in his free guide, What to Eat, and avoid for improved ADHD symptoms and the ADHD friendly nutrients term. To download the free guide, please sign up for our newsletter using the links in the description and we'll send it to you. These benefits are not just limited to foods but also apply to herbs and spices. Mitigating pesticide presence on the foods you choose is also addressed as well as in an ideal diet for people with ADHD. Even though there is support among some ADHD medical professionals like Dr. Daniel Amen for using ADHD diets to help in the treatment of ADHD symptoms, its effectiveness is still not proven and is only recommended as a complementary aid to an existing ADHD treatment plan, not as a standalone therapy. If a nutritional program is to be included, it must be done through an ADHD specialist in those types of treatments, such as a specialized dietitian, psychologist, or naturopath doctor. Naturopath doctors specialize in holistic medical approaches and can use natural medicine. Please take the time to see if there are ADHD psychologists, dietitians, and naturopath doctors who have experience or specialize in nutritional and dietary treatments for ADHD by signing up for our matching service at smartcourse.io products, where we can find and connect you with vetted ADHD professionals in your area or online. Another reason supporting the case for an ADHD diet is that since ADHD, epilepsy, and Alzheimer's are all brain-based disorders, and that certain diets, such as the Cato diet, have been shown to reduce epilepsy and Alzheimer's, there is more support for the effect food and nutrients can have on ADHD symptoms. Currently, there is no consensus as to how the Cato diet can achieve these results, but one theory is that the Cato diet changes key gut bacteria, which in turn appear to have an effect on the brain's neurotransmitters. For ADHD, another use of the word diet is the sensory diet. This is due to the fact that most people with AHD also have SPD, also known as sensory processing disorder. SPD is a sensory processing disorder where one can't process sensory information. 
Carol Kranowitz, one of our ADHD experts, gave a whole masterclass on SPD and ADHD. You can watch her masterclass by clicking on the annotation in the top right of your screen and joining the ADHD Membership Plus plan. The Sensory Diet also observes the same principles of restriction, elimination, and substitution, depending on the person. Since there is support for both forms of ADHD diets, nutritional and sensory, they can both complement each other to improve the lives of people with ADHD according to their specific dietary needs and SPD type. And if you haven't already, please hit the notification bell below and join our newsletter by using the links in the description because we'll be sharing much more resources on how to help caregivers, parents, educators, and health professionals and the kids they care for cope better with ADHD, both at school and at home. We will first explore ADHD food diets and see their benefits and risks. Dr. Daniel G. Amen states that his patients show improvements in focus, stamina, and mood stability while reporting less tiredness, distractibility, and cravings for sugar from using an ADHD diet. The ADHD diet is based on ingesting beneficial foods such as ADHD-friendly nutrients and brain-healthy foods while avoiding harmful ones, detrimental to the management of ADHD. In general, the ADHD diet consists of good fats like omega-3 fatty acids, low glycemic high-fiber carbohydrates, low sugar intake, and moderate consumption of protein. The glycemic index, GI, is very important since it measures the effect of carbohydrate on sugar in your blood. Please take the time to look up the glycemic index for the foods you and your family regularly eat and write them all down in a list to see which are the worst offenders. Please consult with a medical professional about removing them from your diet. ADHD-friendly nutrients are protein and complex carbohydrates, fish oil, and the minerals zinc, iron, and magnesium. Examples of brain-healthy foods, bacon, eggs, spinach, salmon, blueberries, apples, walnuts, red bell peppers. Their benefit is that they can help control swings in mood and behavior and help the brain function at optimal levels. It isn't simply a matter of reducing calories, since some calories can adversely affect hormones, taste buds, and health overall which is due to the cravings that sugary processed foods can cause. The amount, even as small, can still lead to lower energy levels and more food cravings. Dr. Amen states in his research that eating healthy, high-quality foods that give you energy and increase your metabolism can reduce the medication dosage for ADHD. These benefits are not just limited to foods and nutrients, since herbs and spices have historically had medicinal uses and have modern-day applications for ADHD. Dr. Amen lists the following herbs and their benefits in his free guide. Turmeric may decrease the plaque in the brain thought to be responsible for Alzheimer's disease. Saffron extract was found to be as effective as antidepressant medication in treating people with major depression. Rosemary, thyme, and sage help boost memory. Cinnamon has been shown to help attention and blood flow. Garlic and oregano boost blood flow to the brain. Some ADHD diet recipes beneficial for ADHD are a dark and a yellow or red vegetable, whole grain, low-fat milk, yogurt, or cheese. Protein, lean meat, poultry, fish, eggs, bean, or nuts. Omega-3 fatty acids, canola oil, walnuts, or cold water fish. When it comes to avoiding foods in an ADHD diet, processed sugar is one of the worst foods that you should avoid over 5 grams. Gluten-containing grains, dairy, soy, and corn can impact focus, mood, energy, memory, weight, blood sugar, or blood pressure. So if you're having any problems there, then consider cutting them out from your diet. The improvements in stomach and brain health by eliminating barley, rye, imitation meats, and soy sauce is supported by scientific reports, according to Dr. Amen. Guidelines of foods to avoid in an ADHD diet are sugary processed foods like junk food, candies, pastries, cakes, etc. Grams of sugar cannot exceed 5 grams. Industrially farmed animals are to fed corn and soy, dairy, soy, and corn, gluten-containing grains like wheat. Please make a list of all the food you are feeding yourself and your family and read the labels to see all the ingredients or special conditions it may have. Make sure to red flag everything with more than 5 grams of sugar and list it as a problem food. 
Decide on a list of healthy recipes that interest you and talk to your doctor about using them and ingredients to replace high sugar items. There is another aspect of food in general that is important to screen for, and that is pesticides. Commercial farming uses pesticides in the cultivation of crops, and even though the levels are low, the issue is with their accumulation in the body. Examples of foods with the highest levels of pesticide, celery, peaches, apples, blueberries, bell peppers. Examples of foods with the lowest levels of pesticide, onion, pineapple, cabbage, mushrooms, eggplant. Organic means food that has been cultivated with minimal or alternative forms of pest control that are nowhere near as toxic, so it is advised to eat them as much as possible. For the meats, it is best to ensure that they are grass-fed while being hormone and antibiotic free. The elimination of food additives, preservatives, artificial dyes, and sweeteners is also recommended. A very important fact to note about sugar is that it increases inflammation in the body, which leads to inflammation in the brain, as well as the erratic firing of brain cells. Since it is addictive, there are studies that show that sugar might play a role in aggression due to the results showing that children fed sugar every day have a higher risk for violence later in their lives. The human brain is 80% water and can get dehydrated from caffeine and alcohol, so it is important to drink plenty of water throughout the day. Please take the time to track how much water you and your family are drinking daily. See if increasing that to a daily quota brings positive changes. If you continue this practice, it can shed more light on the impact of an ADHD diet. Now, we will look at the ADHD sensory diet. To restate, sensory processing disorder, SPD, often occurs with ADHD where one has problems processing sensory information correctly. This can lead to how they process and interact with their environment, which in turn affects their ability to do a daily routine and tasks such as getting out of bed for school. Just as with the ADHD diet, the ADHD sensory diet requires a medical professional consultation. An occupational therapist, along with the school teacher, will come up with an ADHD sensory diet of things to avoid, mitigate, and include. This will include a 504 accommodation plan or individualized education plan, IEP. To know more about 504 plans and individualized education plans, IEP, please watch the masterclass with Dr. Sarah Wheeler in our ADHD Membership Plus plan using the links in the description. For instructions on what to do, for more information, you can click the annotation in the top right of your screen. These are different for every child, since there are different types of SPD and every child with ADHD is different. The types of SPD are hypovestibular, is when the balance system in the inner ear, the peripheral vestibular system, is not working properly. Hyperproprioceptive, have difficulty knowing where their bodies are in space and are often unaware of their own body. Hypotactile, can obsessively touch objects or picking at their skin or hair because they are seeking tactile sensory stimulation. This can lead to a child who may need to take in lots of information for them to be able to experience stimulation through their senses or they can end up being overwhelmed by very little information. The ADHD sensory diet follows the same principles of elimination, restriction, and substitution as an ADHD food diet. This can manifest as a craving for a physical sensation that the body is lacking, such as a sense of gravity, feeling like you're floating in space, and an under-responsivity to touch, where the child won't notice what is going on around them. The impact of this is that a child with ADHD will not want to get out of bed to go to school if they are not handled the right way. To know more about how to deal with meltdowns and tantrums, please click the annotation at the top right of your screen. One mother was able to remedy this by wrapping her daughter with ADHD up in her blanket tight like a little burrito. This works with kids because the deep compression has a calming effect on the child. For breakfast, the mother also gave her daughter with ADHD a straw to stuck the cereal milk through, which also calmed her down and gave her the sensation her body wanted. The restriction or elimination aspect of this sensory diet is eliminating stimuli that will distract or overwhelm the child. In the case of overstimulation, the recommended guidelines are consultation between teacher and OT to evaluate and reevaluate sensory diet exercises. Use a picture schedule for the day's events. Maintain consistent and predictable routine for the child. Seat the child away from doors and windows to decrease distraction. Decrease amount of visual stimulation in the classroom since visual distractions are very hard for them to filter and get used to. Allow for standing times at a desk or sitting on a therapy ball. Very learning time so that intense short sit-downs are no longer than 15 minutes at first. Decrease the number of paper and pencil based tasks. Incorporate movement and multi-sensory instruction. 
Please talk to your doctor about SPD and whether an ADHD sensory diet can help your child. Try to observe your child's behavior and see if any of the methods used by parents of kids with ADHD and SPD actually help your child. Aside from stimuli to avoid, there are toys and practices that can assist in its management. Some examples are paint with your fingers. Explore sensory bins, which are containers with different shaped and textured objects to provide different touch sensations. Create a texture-filled scavenger hunt. With proper medical guidance, monitoring, and treatment, an ADHD sensory diet can be effectively maintained, which will in turn facilitate ADHD treatment in general. The child will be more receptive to doing tasks at home and in school if the proper sensory diet is put in place. The research is still ongoing on how food can impact and treat ADHD, but there is support for its successful usage by some doctors specialized in the treatment of ADHD. The success of food diets treating brain-based disorders like epilepsy and Alzheimer's are a good indicator. The ADHD diet should never be done as a sole form of treatment, but purely complementary. Becoming educated on the kind of food that is good for the ADHD body and brain, and those that are not, is essential to an effective ADHD diet. All ADHD and ADHD sensory diets require medical consultation and treatment. An ADHD sensory diet can greatly enhance a child's ability to perform daily tasks and be receptive to schoolwork. To make sure you're as prepared as you can be, I want you to hit the notification bell below and join our newsletter because we'll be sharing much more resources on how to help your family cope better with ADHD both at school and at home. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it and let us know what you liked or what you'd like to see more of in the comments below. The more people like, subscribe, click the bell, and comment, the more people will see this kind of content on YouTube. And we know some people could really use the help. We share tons of expert vetted resources on parenting and education for differently abled kids, just like kids with ADHD. So make sure to check out our previous videos and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications for videos to come. As always, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for watching and see you soon.